distribute the audience. But after this last march, I finally have a no shit there I was story. Because I was down at golf. Um, no, Thursday, I don't know how many of you were at golf NATO, I mean golf wars. Um, but we had a bit of fun. Um, Thursday, about 5 o'clock, I started out the Herald's tent and the rain started to come down. And I decided that my shoes would be less easier to wash than my feet, so I took them off, put them in my basket. This is important later. My husband and my son were up at Merchant's Row. I told them I'd meet them later. I went to the tent. As I got there in Calentier's encampment, the rain started coming down hard. So I piled in my basket with my shoes in it, into it, and then the wind picked up hard. I decided, you know, if the lightning strikes the tent, I'm dead anyways. I might as well try and hold it up. The center pole in the middle, and then it snaps this way, and then it snaps out bounces and snaps in this way. Being a child in the Midwest, it's like, oh, we are in a tornado. How interesting. <laughs> <laughs> then it comes up and immediately drops down. This is a center pole tent. The tent went straight down over the pole, pancaked, <laughs> with me inside. I don't know if I screamed. I was busy. <laughs> so the Saxon household next to us, who we knew some of the people down at Oakheart, yelled if I was OK. And, oh, I'm fine. And I'll leave my basket and everything else in the tent and crawl out. I have this purple surcoat on, no shoes. It's pelting now, pale, pea size. So I'm underneath one of their tents, modern, as I watch another modern tent roll down the way. <laughs> um, and the Saxon households were mainly mid 20 year old boys are holding on to their canvas town, yelling at Thor at the side, at the sky. And I'm like, please don't encourage him. <laughs> He's enough doing enough, thank you. So it finally lets up. I go tell my husband and my son up at Merchant Road we have no tent. And they're like, yes, we know we've been holding up this one <laughs> and keeping the merchandise from falling on the sodden floor. And we decided to go over to the mess hall with most everybody else who does not have a tent. And there is Baroness Elena of Glenavon, who is originally for, from Ireland. And so she's got a better growth than I do, but she's like, Oh, Maddies, we need to get the chairs up, and this mattress is on the floor. Nobody's contradicting her because she's Paris Elena. And everybody does small, feisty Irish person. Yeah, we do what she says. <laughs> so we have all the mattresses laid out. There's food over there. They've got clothing set up for those of us who are completely, utterly drenched. I've never been so wet in all of my life. We get dry clothes on, we all lay out on the floor, and everybody takes a great big deep sigh of relief. And then I really wish I had a recorder, because then I could pronounce the snores of the known world. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one that sounds like a hork, a lion, <laughs> and we go on down the line until I laugh myself to sleep and join the chorus. Um, so everything worked out nearly as perfectly that could possibly happen in a disaster. When Aubin said, OK, we have a, tr a situation here, they picked up, said, OK, we need this, we need that, we need this, we need that. And everything worked out one of the best disasters I've ever been into in my entire life. <laughs> we only had, what I heard, like three concussions, a lot of bumps and bruises. But that was the only dangerous medical thing we had. And it was actually some of the most exciting moments I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. But it shows what the SCA does when something like that happens. It all pulled together and get things done. What about the shoes? The shoes were in the tent. I went barefoot the entire <coughs> night in wet and cold. And it was fun. <laughs>